Hi students, this is Miss Walker. I'm here to go over days uh, Wednesday and Thursday for the language review for Q11. So the first uh, box on Wednesday says label the part of speech of each underlined word. The word first is an adjective because it's, te oh, let's read the sentence together, okay? <laughs> the first World Series was played between Boston and Pittsburgh. First is an adjective because it is describing um, the World Series and it's describing that noun. So that's an adjective. And then World Series is two words together and it's used as a thing. It's a person, place, or a thing. So that is a noun. Played. They're showing the actions, what they're doing. So that's a verb. Between Boston and Pittsburgh. Between Boston and Pittsburgh. Between is showing the relationship of the series and the teams. So we need to write that as a preposition. Boston and Pittsburgh are both names of cities, so that is a noun, okay? All right, make the noun plural to complete the sentence. All we have to do here for game is just add an S to make it more than one. So it's G-A-M-E-S. All right, we're gonna add an adjective to improve the sentence. Baseball became known as a blank sport. We could write anything that describes sport. It could be popular, fun, attract, uh, attractive, anything. Let's write fun. Okay, then we are gonna correct the dialogue. It says, President Woodrow Wilson said, baseball is the national pastime. Okay, he said, this part right here, baseball is the national pastime. The rest of it, President Woodrow Wilson said, is just the said tag. It's just telling us what he said. So we're gonna separate the quote from the rest of the sentence by using a comma. Sorry, that comma is not very good, is it? I'm trying to erase it. Oh well, I can't. <laughs> uh, that's supposed to be a comma. Okay. <laughs> And then we're gonna capitalize baseball. And we're gonna put quotes around baseball and after pastime. You notice I left a little space there because after the word pastime, we need to add a period, don't we? All right, so it's President Woodrow Wilson said, comma, quotation marks, capital B, baseball is the national pastime period, and end your quotation mark. All right, for the next box, it says, fix the sentence. During World War I, Americans began singing the Star Spangled Banner at the games. We have a lot of problems with capital letters here, don't we? So we are adding three lines underneath the letters that need to be capitalized. Since the word during is the beginning of the sentence, we definitely want to Put that as a capital. World War One. That's a uh, that one is actually a capital I in this font, and we use that for the number. It's a Roman numeral one, so that's fine. We just leave that alone. World War is the name of a specific war, so we're going to capitalize those. And then we've got one more situation we need to fix, which is the Star Spangled Banner. Because it's in quotes, we know it's the name of the song that they're singing. And you always capitalize the beginning word and the end word of a title. And then all the major words in between. So star and spangled need to have capital letters. Okay. Explain the meaning of yesterday's simile or metaphor. As quick as a whip. My sister was as quick as a whip during the game. She was very fast. Okay. 
write the meaning of the underlined word. It was hard to find his shoe because his room was in disarray. Let's write disorganized. It means not organized. Oh, my handwriting on this, I'm so sorry. But we're, we're doing the best we can, right? <laughs> All right, let's go up to Thursday's box. Make the verbs past tense to complete the sentence. During World War II, baseball players blank playing and blank to war. <clears throat> they stopped playing and can I say goad to war? That makes no sense, does it? No. So we were going to say went to war. Let's see, so for the first one, we're gonna write stopped. You can't just write S-T-O-P-E-D. That would say stoped. So you have to, when you have a vowel and a consonant, you double that consonant, and then you add your E-D. And then, <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <coughs> and then we've got um, go to war. We wanna say past tense, went to war. We have to change that one altogether. All right, now we're gonna label the part of speech of these underlined words. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Trust me, it's just allergies. Okay. <coughs> many, oh, many women replaced men on the baseball field and in factories. So many describes women. That's an adjective. Women is a noun. Replaced is telling what they're doing, so that's a verb. Men is another noun. Those are people, right? So women and men are both nouns. On the baseball field and in factories. We have two prepositional phrases here. So we've got on is a prep. Preposition, baseball tells what kind of field, it's describing the field, so that's an adjective. And the field is noun. Well, noun, okay. And in factories, so we've got a prep here. And factories is the place, so it's another noun. Use the correct, correct, comparative or superlative adjective to complete the sentence. So we're going to use more or most, or we're going to use ER or EST. And the word great is a short word. So we're going to use either greater or greatest. We'll see what makes sense. Babe Ruth was one of baseball's blank players. Well, I think it's saying out of all the baseball players, he is the, what would you write? greatest. There we go. Is this a simple compound or complex sentence? Jackie Robinson was the first African-American big league player, comma, and he helped his team win the World Series. Here we have a Small sentence, a comma and a conjunction, connecting to another small sentence. And when we see that, we know it is compound. Kind of like a compound word is two little words put together. This is two sentences, two little sentences put together to make one sentence. All right, let's fix this sentence. Athletes from all over the world. Ugh, that's really bad, huh? It's not even a complete thought. That means that's a fragment. We need to fix it. Athletes, let's put, I want to put a word in there. Athletes play from all over the world and a period at the end. Now yeah, that's better. You could have used that as an introductory phrase. You could have said, athletes from all over the world play baseball. You can fix it many, many ways. This was just one of them, okay? Now then, we've got name a synonym and anonym for the word interesting. Interesting, what's a synonym? Means the same as interesting. 
a synonym would be like fun and an antonym, something that's opposite of interesting. If you're not interested in it, it sounds kind of what boring, right? So let's write boring. There we go. Now we've got the last little uh, word here. Cassie dismantled her robot because she was curious to see how it worked. She took it apart. Dismantled. Instead of being mantled, put together, it is dismantled. Took it apart. All right, boys and girls, that finishes up this week's language review. Thank you for listening, and I hope you're doing well. Please contact me with any questions, and remember to be checking your Google Classroom page often. Love you and talk to you soon.